Hi there. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a vine leaf. Um, this should have been done when I did the demo of the uh, bunch of grapes with the glass of wine. Um, I never got around to finishing the leaves, so I'm going to finish them now today. So basically the, the brushes I'm going to use are quite small ones. I got a couple of rounds, a size zero, two size threes for softening mostly, and then a size uh, six. And I got a quarter inch flat, which is very useful for uh, pressing in and lifting out the veins and things like that. Okay, so the colours I'm going to use are going to be uh, permanent sap green, some cerulean blue, some French ultramarine blue and some burnt umber. And probably uh, maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson and some raw umber. Um, I'll put that in a list and put that in a shot so that you can write that down or it'll be before what I just said so you can have that to write down. So basically I've got my leaf. I'm going to wet it with clear water. This takes a little bit of time. So I'm just getting a lot of water on in the middle bit where it's easy to apply with this bigger brush. And then I'm going to switch to a size 3 so that I can go right out now to the tips of this vine leaf and make an accurate, you know, I'm taking a lot of care with this outline because the paint then, when I drop it on, will only go where the paper is moist. This is what I call controlled wet into wet. As I say, it takes a little bit of time. But I, I want to do this because this opens up the fibres of the paper and it receives the washes better and it allows me to then lift out any highlights that I might want to lift out in a few minutes more easily. If I paint a green pedal of paint straight onto the leaf, the paper is dry and that paint is going straight onto dry paper and it just it's harder to lift off, you know? So the reason I like to wet things is to give myself plenty of time for messing about with it and lifting out colour if I need to. I've made the outline quite uh, strong for, for purposes of teaching you, but if I was doing this, at, you know, for myself for a painting, I'd probably have the pencil markings a little bit less in evidence so that, you know, you can, so it doesn't take away from the painting too much. When the painting's bone dry, you can always rub away all of the outer pencil. A lot of that will come away. It'll be less obvious. You probably won't get it all off, but a lot more than, you get a lot more off than is showing at the moment. So by the time I do all the tips of the vine leaf on this side, uh, the other side might probably have dried out. Let me just see if I can tip this and show you. Yeah, see the shine there? Let me zoom out a bit. This is what we want, as always, for those of you who've watched a few of my videos. This is the type of shine I want on the paper, uh, ready to do wet into wet. Okay. So I'm just going to add a, a little bit more water and a little bit to the stalk as well so that my first flood of yellowy uh, raw umber and green will flow on and do nice things on the paper. I won't need to brush it around a lot because the water will take it and help it travel and I'll be tipping my board. Okay, so let's mix up some colour then. So we'll take some uh, sap, permanent sap green, a little bit of raw umber, just to sort of neutralise that down a little bit. Permanent sap green. Actually, I forgot one colour. Let's have a bit of uh, Windsor yellow as well. Windsor yellow. Or any pale lemony yellow 
bit more raw amber. Right, so there's my pedal. So let's just um, flood this on. And actually I've missed out a very important bit. Um, while I'm painting this on, I'll just show you this. That's my leaf. And this is the leaf with colour removed. I removed it in Adobe Photoshop and I posterised it down to just two values, grey and black. And this will help me to see the darker patches of green and paler patches of uh, yellowy green when I come to paint it. Being a good painter means being able to perceive tones and colours and shadows and shapes really well. Um, so if you find that hard, if you find it hard to see light and dark, you know, in your painting, then let technology help you um, get your image, take, take the colour out of it, you know, get it into black and white or take a black and white image yourself. So you take the colour out and then if you, you know, push the, the, the light and dark bars together, you know, in, in any image manipulation tool, you will get a peaking, you know, an exaggeration of the light and dark of on, on the leaf. And if you save that and then print that off, that will help you see what you might not see so easily at the moment. You know, learning to see is, a, is an ongoing job, work in progress. It can, t it can be quite rapid with you or it can take you a few years. But in the old days, artists used to squint, and in fact they still do squint. Squinting down at your subject diminishes all the big masses of light and dark into simplified forms. And it's easier then to see where the light and dark areas are. We're not worried about details at the moment, we just want light and dark. So um, I've got a base colour on now, and I'm ready to put in a slightly darker tone. Um, as per this image now, you see. So I can see my darkest bits are there and my sort of lighter bits are there. So I know as I progress I'm going to keep on working these darker areas. So first of all, let's go, let's go a bit darker. So I've got my size 3 brush and when I pick up pink now, I'm, I'm, there's less water in it. Can you see it's much more gooey? That's very liquid and thin. This is much more gooey and viscous. So let's have some burnt uh, sort of raw umber with that. Mix that in. So this is definitely a couple of tones darker than the first wash, isn't it? It's a bit water. Right, I don't want it too runny because I don't want it to flare too far, to bleed too far. So that's my size three brush. Let's put some on. And I'm using that picture I just showed you as my sort of road map as to where these darker bits are going to be. And it doesn't have to be exact. All I aim for in my paintings is to have a good bit of contrast, you know, somewhere. Because if you feel like your paintings look flat all the time, it's probably because you haven't been brave enough with strong tonal contrast and everything looks a bit safe and samey, you know, everything's sort of the same tone, the same strength. So you need to be confident and go dark in some places and also be lighter and have highlights in some places. Then your painting will start to come alive and sort of lift off the paper. That's all we're doing in art, isn't it? We're trying to, in, in the vision, in the painting, and drawing, we're trying to make the 2D piece of paper give us a 3D look. And you have to do that by introducing dark areas, mid areas and light areas at the very minimum. Okay, you need some contrast. I mean, if you don't want a high contrast painting, that's fine. You know, you, you just paint things quite flatly and there's not much difference in contrast in light and dark. And that's okay, but most people sort of tend to want to paint realistically, and so this is this is how I go about it. I'm going to keep that stalk sort of quite dark. Let's have some of the tips here a bit darker. Yeah, so going back to image manipulation, if you squint down, then you still can't really make out the light and dark. If you can't really get it yet. Let technology help you until your eye gets practised 
and see in. Because when you print off that posterized black and white image, it's done the work for you. It's, it, it's done the perceiving for you. And then you can see what you need to look out for the next time when, you, when you're looking and you're practicing looking. It's all, it's all about seeing, isn't it? Right? Everyone can look, but how deeply can you see is the question. So I'm just going to tip this now and let things run a little bit. It's not running with water, it's just moist, so we've got a bit of control. I just want to soften those paint strokes I've put on a little bit more. Make it look a little bit more natural. I'm tipping it 360 degrees, this way and that way. There we are. I'm doing this until I'm happy with the softening that I've, that I've achieved. Okay, so we're getting there, we're getting there. It's lovely building up leaves, isn't it? Leaves, leaves are lovely to paint. And again, you know, paint one leaf. If you're a beginner, paint one leaf, paint a couple of leaves one after the other in different colours and get good at that. You know, don't suddenly launch into painting a forest. You know, because you're, you're asking yourself, you're asking too much of yourself, maybe. Little steps. And once you've nailed this, you can go confidently then to paint trees. Right? So let's have some stronger green now again, right? So I'm just using what was there. Let's go back. We'll have a bit of um, sap green again. Now let's go for some French ultramarine blue. Yeah, that's really darkened it down. Okay. And a bit of burnt umber. And, and they say, they say the magic number is no more than three colours mixed together. Because once you add the fourth colour, you really start to get mud. So I, I sort of try and try and stick to that. Okay, so I'm just going to build a stronger tone again now. And as I'm talking to you, this painting has been drying over the last few minutes. Okay, so it's, as I apply this paint, it's going to run even less than the first lot of dark I just put on, isn't it? So it, it'll stay it'll stay quite obediently where I'm putting it. And won't bleed much at all. But we're still working wet into wet because the paper is still moist, okay? A bit of a swathe of dark green all across this lobe of the leaf. And I like it irregular, I like it asymmetrical. I don't like things in nature to be too set. That's my own personal taste. A bit of dark there in that crevice, right, okay. So again, we got a bit more contrast again, again, last time. Um, I just want to try and show you. Yeah, see that sheen there? There. Let me zoom out, sorry. There. That sheen is still moist, you see, all over. That's where wet in the paper really comes into its own because my leaf is all moist. And so I'm getting little, little degrees of softening that you can't get if you know you're working straight onto dry paper. So finally now I think I'm just going to lift out some highlights. So you can go on and on. I lift out some highlights then I'm going to dry the leaf and put in some hard uh, lines for the veins. So to, to, to lift out highlights I've got a flat brush which I'm going to moisten and then I'm going to wipe in a flannel like that. And I'm wiping it, you know, in the shape, keeping that. You know, don't don't squish it the wrong way. Ship it there. Okay. So now let's lift out. Uh, let's have a highlight here. So. I just want some real, really, uh, and I'm rinsing my brush every time I lift a highlight. Press the brush in, drag, rinse it. You might need to do this a few times to get the colour off. Takes a little bit of work. Rinse, wipe, rinse, wipe. And you suck the brush then acts as an eraser and sucks up the colour. 
I'm going to lift out a vein there with this lovely sharp edge of this quarter inch flat. Might need to do it a few times. I'm cutting through that darker green. Yeah, it's coming now. I need to do it a couple of times. might seep back in so just keep cutting and keep on lifting out right and I think I'm going to stop there and blow dry it and then put some final veins on okay so it's bone dry I've hair dried it I don't recommend hair drying though because it does kill the vibrancy of the paint I just hair dry for my videos um, I'm going to rub away now the outline, pencil outline, so that'll, that'll make it look nicer. I'll get rid of that graphite on the outer edges a bit more. Okay, better. And now with the size 3, no, with the size, I'm going to use a size 0 brush now for this tiny work. I'm going to mix up some more uh, sap green, burnt umber. A little bit of alizarin crimson, very strong uh, dark green mix there. For these veins, I want to put some veins in, and again, this is a lovely fine brush, and I want a bit of a broken line. I don't want it to be too perfect, lost and found, and some radiating out, you know, from there. From the center. I'm lifting my brush off the painting every so often to make that line a little bit chipped and broken. You only need to put a few veins in. I mean unless you're painting botanic in a botanical style and you really want to paint everything and that's fine that's, that's a different style altogether isn't it. But I'm just doing a sort of natural leaf and I, I don't want to spell every single thing out the peep the viewer can see it's a, a leaf you haven't got to spell everything out to them so I'm partly doing these thing tips right with this dark color again now I'm going to just go in here and there and I'm pressing the brush down flat like that making those types of marks in some of these lobes on top of the dark passages I've already painted let's have some over there and then just dragging it like that and using this sort of dry brush technique just dragging it and waggling it back and forth just to give a little bit of surface texture now to the leaf so the, the paint is very is, is very viscous it's not very runny so it'll leave nice little scratchy marks to give us a bit of texture this is really fine fussy work and I always save this right until the end I don't do anything like this until I'm practically at the end of my painting. So again, holding the brush quite uh, quite low down, let me zoom out a little bit, and doing this rubbing, keeping all the hairs of the brush in contact with the paper, picking up a minus, minute, there's the paint, you see, a bit of um, paint so you don't land up with a blob. We're just going in small increments to get a little bit of texture on this leaf. And again, I'm not going to do this all over either. It's just going to be in places. I'm going to do it in the where the stalk meets the main body of the leaf. I'm going to get dark in there, a bit darker. So I feel it needs it there. A bit of balance maybe on the right hand side 
and I'll just I think I'm going to stop there okay so so th this leaf's all about wet into wet using you know light tone mid tone and dark tone and then a little bit of dry brush at the end um, if you'd like to subscribe to me any new videos I do each week will come straight to your inbox and um, if you've got any questions or if you'd like to make a donation my donation button is at the end of this video that keeps me in tea and cake by the way and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. Any questions, just ask away in the comments box below. Thanks.